Upheaval, Reckoning, Chapter 4, One More Fight It had been less than a month since the Wolven captured Fangbreaker Fortress and their great symbol of victory already represented something else, a giant grave marker for its new Wolven defenders. With the army on the retreat and enraged Thunderfoots already surrounding them, Fangbreaker's woven occupants had dug down and prepared to be slaughtered to the last warrior. Most of the main army had already retreated to Wolvenguard to prepare for an invasion. Not a single woven believed that the Legion would be satisfied with simply taking back its fort. A large group of them stayed behind to delay the Thunderfoot advance. It was no secret that to stay and fight was a sure and violent death, which was why hundreds volunteered, so much that not every woven who wanted to stay was allowed. Otherwise, Fenrir would have lost his entire army holding the place. The woven didn't really understand the ultimate goal in conquering Equestria. They knew of their king's desire for Fair Luna, but very few of them really understood it. Settling the land was no great prospect. Indeed, the few woven that had managed to journey into the western and southern portions of Equestria found the place uncomfortably warm and did not relish the idea of settling in such place. The final goal didn't matter, however. The fighting was what did. All of the warriors who had consinged themselves to the last stand had joined the army because it was simply the natural thing to do after growing up. The bloody death that accompanied that career at some point was accepted as a natural, even preferable, end to one's life. For Hasrock, that basic choice was not one without some pleasures. He picked his fangs of the last bits of sinew and threw it to the nearby pile of gnawed woven bones. As far as the physical meal was concerned, a Giskra was an awful dinner. Far too gristly and bony. Hasrock enjoyed every bite regardless. The old crone was an arrogant witch, and it was almost worse seeing the siege of the Thunderfoot city fail just to see her visions count for nothing. Not one woven protested when he meted out her punishment. Enjoy your meal, pup. You think I was mistaken only because you can barely see past your snout. Hasrock snorted at his meal's last words. He had never met a more delusional dog in his entire life. He was far too ashamed of her to call her a proper woven. A true woven would not rely on dreams and strange creatures. It was a shame indeed. He had known Higeskra before old age had broken most of her fangs. Just a few years ago he would have happily slaughtered Thunderfoots by her side. Now she was doing him a final favor by filling his belly and granting him the strength to kill as many of the Thunderfoots before falling in this wretched fortress. There was one more complication. Moonshadow was still around, as was her Thunderfoot slave. Like the rest of the woven army, Moonshadow had been forced to retreat by the coming of both cursed Celestia and the unrecognized Thunderfoot leader that decimated their forces. Unlike the rest of the woven army, she wasn't doing her part in slowing the Thunderfoots down. All she had done so far was stand on top of the fortress and glower uselessly for the past few days. Here I am, just a battle away from getting into the final hunting grounds, and it has to be marred by this unnatural thing, Hasrock thought. The walls continued to take a pounding while he waited. The Thunderfoots didn't have a problem with destroying their precious fortress. The reinforced gate they built over the ruined ones was also on the verge of falling apart. Even with the final surge of Thunderfoots about to happen, it looked like Moonshadow was only there to watch them die. How long are you going to put up this infantile resistance? Just a few days ago, Pyre Valor would have answered Nightmare Moon's angry taunt with a stinging remark of her own. Now she didn't have the strength. The humiliating retreat to Fangbreaker for Nightmare Moon had been a triumphant return for her. The Legion had pulled through just as she knew it would. She wasn't interested in the wise and the house. The Legion had done what needed to be done, just as she did. Right now she was already on her final mission. As soon as Nightmare Moon had landed on the fort, she had summoned every ounce of her will to hold her body rigid, rooting Nightmare Moon to one spot and preventing her from aiding the woven. That was days ago. She had been locked in a battle of wills with Nightmare Moon for all that time and was on her last legs. 
Already Nightmare Moon was able to partially move some of her legs and was slowly climbing down her perch. She was barely aware of their surroundings, having already given up the use of her senses to Nightmare Moon. She had focused on holding her limbs and shutting down her magic, but control over those was also being slowly wrestled away. It just seemed that Nightmare Moon's mental strength was limitless while she was only mortal. The faint sound of howling among the woven brought some ray of light to Pyrus' slowly darkening world. The Legion was taking back Fangbreaker, and their last push was almost here. Nightmare Moon lifted her legs with more ease. They were galloping from the rooftop now. Pyra abandoned trying to control her legs and focused all her remaining strength on trying to keep Nightmare Moon's magic down. They are here! Nightmare Moon's mental tone all but assured Pyra as to who they were. She had heard elements of harmony often enough from the shadow of being, and it was always with a tinge of concern. Nightmare Moon feared the elements of harmony. The thought of it was amusing, if nothing else. Pyre hadn't cared about the elements of harmony, save for Twilight Sparkle being part of them. Recently she had viewed them with a bit more concern. They were important tools, the only tools likely good enough to destroy her passenger. Through Nightmare Moon's enchanted magical senses, she had felt the barrier go down. She had seen Celestia appear in the barrier lands. For all intents and purposes, her mission had been a success. Nightmare Moon's presence was a final wrinkle in this whole affair, and her disposal will be Pyre's final gift to the Legion. Then there was Blademain. With her vision gone and her hearing following, Pyre had no idea what had become of Blademain. He was in the fort somewhere, likely waiting for the right opportunity to die by her side. She had told him to leave even during the siege of Bastion City, begged him when he refused, berated him when begging did nothing, going so far as telling him that his devotion was useless and that she was never going to return his feelings. Nothing moved Blademain. She would have been touched, but all she felt was a wish that it was Vanguard instead. A trickle of magic slipped past Pyre and Nightmare Moon used it to flow to the front gates. Cursing at her distraction, Pyre shoved aside on her other thoughts. There was little time to get their bearings once Twilight and the rest of her friends arrived in front of Fangbreaker Fortress. The Legion was pounding the front gates with catapult shot and fireballs. The snow had let up momentarily, providing a small measure of respite. Vanguard led them to the front lines, then went over to speak with the siege commander. How's the siege going? Vanguard asked. We're giving them a throughout beating. Losses have been minimal and we're expecting the final charge pretty soon, the siege commander replied. What about Nightmare Moon? Twilight asked. The siege commander looked at Twilight, then glanced at Vanguard, unsure if he should reply or berate this legionnaire for speaking out of turn. When Vanguard nodded, he spoke with some reluctance. If by Nightmare Moon you mean that black flaming thing that's been perched on top of the fort throughout the siege, it hasn't moved an inch since we started attacking. The burning figure suddenly jumped from its perch and floated downwards. Well, will you look at that? The siege commander muttered. Almost like it was waiting for your group. She was waiting, Twilight replied. Vingard gestured for her and the others to move forward. Twilight, Vingard said. He looked at the gates that the woven had constructed after Pyre destroyed the previous ones. Their enemies had done well with the time and material that they had, but there was no way that their makeshift gates could hold out much longer. It was badly scorched and splintered by the time he and his squad had arrived. Finish the job. Twilight stepped forward. There were still woven bolters on top of the gates, but the pegasi were keeping them pinned with crossbow fire. There were also several earth ponies in front of her, carrying enormous shields, should a bolter risk getting turned into a bloody pincushion to take a shot. Upon Vanguard's order, she remembered the first time she came to the barrier lands, with her friends and the horrific sight of the ruined gates of Fangbreaker. Pyre Valor had destroyed those gates. This time she was going to do something similar. She went through the spells she could use. A fireball won't cut it in one shot. No, she was going to have to use something with a stronger impact. Chunks of earth began to form in front of her, turning into a large sphere of red glowing rock. 
After a few more moments of concentration, the rock burst into flames. The siege commander looked on in awe. The meteor hurled toward the gates as if it was launched by one of their catapults. It struck the gates hard, splintering the wood and igniting it. In the next instant it exploded into a massive blast of red-orange flames. The explosion flung smoldering splinters as far as the rear lines and left a partially burned and open path toward the fortress. There were no cheers as the sight of the gates collapsing. No battle cries followed by a rush of charging legionnaires. For the next few moments there was only an odd silence, like a brief calm before a storm. Several ponies stared at Twilight dumbfounded, until one pony decided to shout. That shout was soon followed by others until there was finally a wave of legionnaires pouring in for an attack. The Wolven, after an initial daze from such a powerful blast, quickly filled the resulting opening with their troops. Legionnaires crashed into them so violently that several Wolven were flung back into their rear lines. The air filled with snarls and howls, mixing with fierce neighs, the suds of something hard and blunt striking flesh, and the awful whining of metal grinding against stone. Twilight stepped forward to cast a spell and help out the attackers, but Vanguard pulled her back. Stay together, he told her. This squad was brought here to deal with Nightmare Moon. Do not let yourself be distracted by anything from that mission. He turned towards the rest of his squad. Vice Captain, he called out. From the back of the squad, Applejack trotted forward. In addition to her usual barding, she now had the chain she had received earlier wrapped around her neck. It was too short to be used for any form of lassoing she was used to, but she insisted on keeping it around just in case. When Pinkie Pie had been briefly separated from them, she was assigned to rear guard to make sure that the squad stayed together. Need something, Captain? she asked. Make sure the squad stays together. If the elements need some kind of formation, make sure you can get into it right away. Scarlet and I will see if we can lure her out to a more open place. Vanguard pulled out his weapon and clamped it between his teeth. He gestured at Scarlet, who was already taking to the air. Applejack saluted. Right away, she replied. Twilight watched the two in confusion. It was a simple exchange between a higher-ranked legionnaire and a lower-ranked one. That was all. At least, that what was her brain told her. Applejack had told them a few nights ago about her new position. No pony seemed to have a problem with it. She was certain that she didn't. Yet, that increasingly annoying twinge in her chest was back. It made no sense. Was she envious of Applejack's promotion? No, she told herself. Applejack has worked very hard in the Legion so far. She deserves it. A cold, resentful tone badgered her anyway. I've been working hard too, and wasn't Pyrovella the previous vice-captain in his squad? She was a unicorn mage. Twilight, what are you doing? Applejack's sharp question shook Twilight out of her reverie. Applejack was already wearing her necklace. Put your big fancy crown on and let's get every pony here. The two of them turned towards the rest of their friends. None of them needed any prompting. The elements of harmony were out and ready. Twilight closed her eyes for a moment, trying to get a feel of how ready they were. The elements of harmony resonated silently with each other, something she realized she could feel if she concentrated hard enough. There was still a lot of wavering between them, Rainbow Dash in particular, but she sensed some in Applejack as well. To her dismay, she also felt a lot from herself. Nevertheless, actually having the elements of harmony with them this time seemed to have a reassuring effect. The ones who weren't used to the front lines, Fluttershy, Rarity and Pinkie Pie, looked a bit more confident. They could still use some more harmony, but Twilight was sure that they were coming into this fight in better condition than the last time. Besides, they didn't have Fenrir howling at a distance to paralyze them. It wasn't long until they spotted the daunting sight of Nightmare Moon's blackened aura. Twilight saw Vanguard slowly backing up, while Scarlet was hovering nearby, firing bolts. She focused her attention on Nightmare Moon and immediately noticed that something was wrong. This wasn't like their previous battle, and it wasn't just because of the different location or their possession of the actual elements of harmony. When Nightmare Moon moved past the woven defenders and towards Twilight's group, it wasn't through the blazing explosive leap she had done the last time. Instead, it was a slow, laborious walk that made Twilight hesitate, not out of intimidation, but out of sheer confusion. 
Was this some kind of trap? Was Nightmare Moon baiting them into attacking? Sensing weakness, the other legionnaires were about to charge in, but Vanguard warns them to stay back and focus on their more mundane enemies. Twilight! Applejack looked towards the center of their formation. Twilight answered the look with a determined nod. This wasn't the same Nightmare Moon who had so proudly attacked them. The effect was telling. Faced with a weakened Nightmare Moon, their determination to fight on and finally defeat a dangerous foe resonated well. Every pony took a step forward, and that lone step increased the flow of magic from one element to the other. Twilight began to feel her crown hum with a familiar energy. It was the same one she felt when she and her friends drove Nightmare Moon out of Princess Luna and when they returned Discord to stone. When they took another step forward, she saw Nightmare Moon visibly flinch and raise a hoof as if to step back. More power flowed through the elements. Why are you still doing this? Nightmare Moon snarled. Twilight Sparkle is standing right there. Don't you want her dead? There was no response from the wretchedly obstinate Pyre Valor. The elements of harmony were steadily gathering their courage. Nightmare Moon took another step forward to show them that she was not out of the fight yet. She unleashed her magic, or tried to. Instead of unleashing, it felt more like desperately coaxing an animal out of its den. The blackened aura of her magic was no longer ablaze with Pyrovella's own when it finally burst from her horn. This was even worse than trying to fight against the elements with Luna's constantly hesitant body. Her synergy with Pyrovella had been superb because Pyrovella never hesitated. When she wanted to do something, she dove right into it so that, when they both wanted the same thing, the resulting power was incredible. Now that Pyrovella planned on hindering both of them, she did so with equal fervor. Pyrovella was already weak from the struggle, however. Nightmare Moon had control over all their physical form. It was their magic that the stubborn unicorn shackled and that was failing as well. The blackness spread from her body like ink spilling, threading to engulf any pony that tried to close in. It was no field of dark tentacles, but it gave even the elements of harmony some pause. The pause didn't last long. Twilight Sparkle had likely gauged the amount of magic she was putting forth and realized how weakened she was. The unicorn's horn blazed with magic, while the crown on her head began to glow. A dispelling wave burst from twilight and smashed into the gathering darkness around Nightmare Moon. Her weakened array easily dispersed, like a guttering candle held up during a gale. Now! Twilight Sparkle cried out. More power swirled around the elements of harmony, centering on her crown. What started out as invisible wisps of power were now brightly colored streams of light. They swirled around until a prismatic tornado whipped into being. Nightmare Moon let out a cry of rage and frustration. It was happening again. For the second time she was going to be beaten back by toy-wearing folds. Let go, damn you! Nightmare Moon shouted at Pyrovalor. There was still no response. No words, anyway. To her rage, Nightmare Moon felt a measure of amusement coming from Pyrovalor. The miserable unicorn was actually pleased by what was happening. She considered abandoning the body, itself a painful process, but it was unlikely that she would find another body even remotely compatible. The prismatic cyclone enveloped Nightmare Moon, searing away any magic she tried to use. Desperate, she flailed her front hoofs about to push away the inevitable banishing. Not again! she shouted in frustration. It couldn't end like this. Trapped in a failing fortress like a rat, then shoved aside by folds like a fly. She felt her grip on Pyrovella slowly tear away. Desperation seared away any other concern. The only option remaining was Oceanus Tum Achille Opsikrat. It was a final plea set more out of rage than any realistic belief that aid would come. The firstborn was still dormant, as was nearly all his followers. But to complete her remaining tasks, she had to try. She wasn't going to face him with tasks still to be done, especially with all the opportunities she had been provided with. Twilight had to admit that seeing the elements of harmony working in full concert was a little surprising and immensely elating. She was worried that they wouldn't be able to get the elements to work. 
The light surrounded Nightmare Moon just like it did the last time. All it would take now was that final flash and... Oceanus tum Achille Opsigrat! The sudden outburst nearly caused Twyla to lose her focus. Oceanus. She had heard the name before. Hearing it from Nightmare Moon enclosed her heart in an icy grip. The bright glare of hope that the elements gave forth wavered. Then Twilight saw it, a small spark of blackness that pierced the whirlwind of light surrounding Nightmare Moon. She felt the magic that accompanied that spark, a small yet chilling presence that sent the hairs on the back of her neck rising. Something was wrong, something was going to go horribly wrong. The light from the elements flashed, but the brilliant white explosion was tainted by great arcs of blackness and a drawn-out and unearthly scream that set Twilight's teeth on edge. One look towards her friends told her that none of them expected it. Around them the Legion continued to fight against the remaining woven defenders, but several had stopped to see what was going on. That was when Twilight realized that something else was still coming after that blast, an immense explosion of harmful magic that could very well destroy her and her friends. Every pony, stand back! she cried out. She ran forward and raised a magical barrier. It wasn't as good as Applejack's golden shield, but it was more reliable for now. Just as Twilight predicted, another explosion, this one as dark as midnight, erupted from the still fading light. She gritted her teeth and concentrated all her magic on the shield. The last thing she saw was a wave of darkness advancing towards her, then nothing at all. The sudden explosion of darkness sent Applejack and the rest of her friends flying. Out of the corner of her eye she saw Vanguard try to reach Twilight, only to be sent careening, his armor dragging loudly against the ground. She rolled on the ground for a good distance before finally coming to a stop. The clouds of dust and snow raised by the blast made her cough as well as obscured her vision. What of the hydras happened? she asked in between cuffs. Did we do it? Rainbow asked as she dragged herself to her hoofs. She was just a few feet away from Applejack. Is Nightmare Moon gone? I don't know, Applejack replied. Things went a little too smoothly. Well, except for that second explosion, I can't believe something could explode twice. Is any pony hurt? Fluttershy called out. They saw her hovering silhouette approaching them. I'm fine, Rarity said from behind them. Pinky here hit her head on the ground, but she's already recovering. I'm over here, Scarlet yelled. He flew through the dust and snow and landed next to Vanguard. Every pony, regroup on me. Vanguard called out from the cloud. They followed suit and soon found each other. Did you do it? He asked them once they had gathered. Has the threat been neutralized? I don't know, Applejack replied. I think. She stopped when she heard a faint metallic crack sound just around her neck. Worried, she looked down on her necklace. To her horror, she saw a thin crack near the apple-shaped jewel. The crack quickly spread into a spidery network of lines. No, she cried out. How the hey? The cracks continued to spread for another second, then the necklace shattered into fine, powdery pieces. With a gasp, Applejack tried to save the fragments as they fell, but a stiff breeze caught them, blowing them all across the snowy plain. Cries of alarm from Rainbow and the others told Applejack that the same was happening to them as well. She looked to them to see Rainbow desperately crawling around and Fluttershy holding up an inch of gold chain, ready to burst into tears. How can this be? Rarity asked. The elements are gone. Applejack looked around. The dust had settled and she noticed that a lot of the legionnaires around them were also recovering. Where Nightmare Moon was standing was now an empty, still-smoking crater. Wait a minute. Applejack had looked around as well. Where's Twilight? he asked. With all of them now frantically searching, Vanguard walked over near the edges of the crater. As he did so, something crunched underneath his tramplers. He raised his hoof and looked down. On the ground was a crushed fragment of a large crown. You guessed it, it's common time again, me rambling about the current chapter. Okay, my opinion of this chapter was, well, it's good, but 
There are a few things I would have liked, especially when the Legion brought through, I would have liked a little more action, like a uh, little more fighting. Well, not just saying that they are like uh, charging into the woven. Okay, but that was okay, because there was another part which I actually m liked pretty much about this chapter, and that was Pyro Valor is holding back Nightmare Moon. Um, yeah, she tries to um, prevent her from helping the woven against the ponies, and she's actively resisting her and therefore helping the Legion. Um, she is if I may say so, still loyal to the prince, but, well, her actions, like Vengar said in another chapter of uh, Breaking Point, her actions condemn her. She went about it the wrong way, at least I think so. She made a mistake, a big one, she screwed up. But uh, she is still siding with the Legion when it counts. That's what I think here. I'd like to hear your opinion about it. Sincerely yours, Visual Pony.